As today is Christmas Eve and the time of year for making lists, I thought it was appropriate to make a Call of the Wild wishlist video, basically looking at the things that I'd like to see come to the game next year and beyond. Now, the point of this video is not to try to predict things that we're going to see next year, and it's also not just simply to say the things that I hope to eventually have added. My ultimate goal is to kind of put these things out there and maybe see if any of these ideas catch fire. And what I'm mostly talking about is kind of like what turkeys did. The community was so interested in seeing turkeys added to Call of the Wild, it was in every W stream chat and all over their Discord to the point that eventually turkeys were in fact added. So I don't know if any of these ideas are good enough to eventually make it to the game, but if there's anything that's maybe a really good idea that hasn't been put out there that much, maybe that is something that could end up going further into the community. Now, I do think the items on this list kind of vary in how likely it is they actually get added, and a couple of them I think it's very unlikely that we ever see them in Call of the Wild, and that is kind of the case with the first one, but it's something I've been talking about for a long time. I would really like to see essentially a removal of the level system in Call of the Wild, and having it replaced by an age system, or even just adding an age system on top of what we already have. The biggest issue, I think, with the level system, other than the fact that it does feel a little bit kind of almost arcadey, is the fact that a lot of newer players that maybe don't necessarily understand how the levels work expect maybe every level 5 animal to make diamond for the species that make diamond at level 5, and for some of the ones that can make diamond at level 4, maybe they don't know to shoot it with the right weapon, they don't try as hard because they don't expect it, whereas some of them make it fairly often. I think if it was replaced with an age system, and I, I usually use the example of whitetail deer, if instead of a level 3 whitetail, you would see maybe age 4 to 6, that doesn't necessarily tell you, alright, guaranteed diamond, guaranteed gold, you just know it's an older mature buck that maybe would have a good likelihood of scoring high. That removes the level 2 diamonds, level 4 diamonds, level 8 diamonds that don't make as much sense, and at least to me, don't feel as legitimate. If you have a diamond buck that's a slightly lower age, that's just a thing that happens often in real life. Sometimes they have good genetics, and they score higher than some bucks that are older. I would love to see it. I think it would add a lot of realism. I think it would kind of clear up some confusion, and who knows, maybe it'll happen one day, but like I said, I, I don't think that one's as likely, because that would require a pretty big overhaul. Another pretty major thing I'd like to see added to Call of the Wild is for the camo selection to actually matter. You may have noticed that we're still wearing the woodland ghillie suit, and we just had all these ghillie suits added as kind of rewards for making an Apex Connect account. Obviously there are other camouflage patterns, there was a ghillie suit as a reward for, I think it was buying Call of the Wild within the first 30 days if you had a classic account. There is a couple of camo patterns from reserves, there was the Remy Warren camo. I just wish it actually mattered what you wear. I mean, you can, if you didn't know, wear literally any clothing type that you can get in the game, and it has no effect on how likely animals are to see you. If you compare that to classic, in the Hunter Classic, your camo selection does in fact matter, and there's actually even a little application on the Hunter Mate to let you know if the camo you've chosen is blending into the surrounding environment. I would, I mean, it's just, again, it's a realism thing. I would love to see it. It's one of those things where it just kind of adds to the immersion. If you're hunting on the snowy map, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to wear brown or maybe black colors. You'd want to have that white color to blend in with the snow, Versus when you go to a summer map, wearing snow camo isn't really going to work as good. You want those darker, shadowy colors to let you blend in. It's another thing that would require a bit of an overhaul, I think less so than the age system, because you do have the ability to stay hidden just kind of by going into brush. So I think they could work that into camo. I'd love to see it once again. And who knows, maybe that one is a little more likely anyway. And I referenced the Hunter Classic in that last one. I think the biggest thing that, for the most part, the majority of the Call of the Wild community wants to see from Classic 
is the trophy shots and I think especially for a game that has a built-in kind of score tiering system with bronze, silver, gold, diamond, the ability to take trophy shots and not have to taxonomize animals that are maybe good, maybe even they just fall in like a really nice place for scenery, if you could just take a picture and have that rather than having to taxonomize the animal and place it in your trophy lodge, not only would it, I think, kind of make maybe the lower scoring animals a little more valuable to players and make it feel like a little more of an accomplishment. There is also the other side of it, and it's a thing that's been asked for in Classic as well. Maybe you could add photos into the trophy lodge. That would essentially open up more room to add more trophies, in a way at least, to your lodge. And again, it's that realism thing, generally speaking, in real life, when you harvest an animal, you do take a trophy shot of sorts. And it's one of the... I think biggest aspects of Classic, I spend so much time trying to take the perfect trophy shot when I get a special animal. I'd love to get to do the same in Call of the Wild. It adds the realism, maybe that would open up an avenue, and this isn't one that I had on my list, but for character customization, if there were trophy shots, you'd want your player to look different than other hunters, avatar players. Uh, that are also posting trophy shots in the community. So that could open up a whole ton of stuff for Call of the Wild down the road. That's, you know, the player customization, camouflage, all that stuff could go into the one category. Another thing that I would love to see added, which definitely still kind of goes along the realism vein, but also starts to add to a little bit of a quality of life type of thing, is a new dog breed. And for me, of the potential options for dog breeds that could be added to Call of the Wild that would be helpful, Retrievers are at the top of my list. We continue to get new small game species added, obviously the quail and a fifth species of rabbits over on Mississippi. We've got three species of dogs, we've got geese, there's so much that Retrievers could actually help with, and I think geese would be the biggest one. And quail kind of go into the same thing because you can't shoot so many of them at once, but when you're shooting a bunch of birds, from an area that is good, and especially with geese when they're continuing to fly over, you don't necessarily want to leave that spot to go and claim your birds. You want to stay there and keep getting the ones that are coming past. Again, and I didn't mean to have so much classic at the beginning here, but the retrievers in classic allow you to do that, and in classic it's more necessary to use a blind. The retrievers will actually bring them into the blind, you don't even have to leave that, which is fantastic. But even if that wasn't implemented, just the ability to have a retriever bring geese or quail or ducks, rabbits over to you rather than having to go and find them and it would just allow you to keep your focus on continuing to hunt. I think they did a really good job with the bloodhounds and I think they could do an equally good job with a new retriever breed. Now this is another one that I've been on for quite some time. I think it was since the release of Silver Ridge Peaks, so about a year and a half ago. I started to feel like we needed a kind of long range weapon pack and originally I didn't have a fully fleshed out idea but I think at this point I kind of do. Now when it comes to a gun, for me it doesn't matter what caliber it is, probably something in the weapon class range of the M1, so kind of covering classes 4 to 8, but I just want a gun that can be zeroed out to 400 meters. You have maps like Silver Ridge Peaks with the Mountains, Rancho that is so open. Verhunga also is super open, and these abilities to take shots well beyond 400 meters, but no gun that can zero anywhere past 300. I just think something like that, where you could, I guess, have a more viable gun for those long shots, would be quite nice. And to go along with that, I think what would make the most sense is a rifle scope that could zoom a little bit higher, maybe out to like 24 power, 22 power, something in that general vicinity. And then a spotting scope, and that doesn't even necessarily just have to be for looking at stuff 400 meters and beyond. A lot of these smaller game, I've noticed it a good bit even with the alligators, but specifically ducks at a greater distance and rabbits. Sometimes even the Argus scope isn't good enough to spot them, so if you could have that spotting scope have more zoom as a handheld optic, that could let you spot stuff in a distance where usually you have to get closer to do it. All that stuff fits into one kind of DLC. I think it would be fantastic, and again, 
all of the shooting opportunities for those long range shots, a little additional zero range would go a long way. It actually doesn't even feel like it, but it's been over two years since the last Trophy Lodge was added to Call of the Wild. So Sega Safari came out in November of 2019, and as big of an upgrade as it felt like over Spring Creek Manor, at least for me, and I've seen it throughout the community, a lot of hunters end up having it kind of filled and still end up wanting for more space. What I would like to see is a lodge kind of with a similar size, maybe with another story, maybe just a little bit bigger, maybe a better use of the space, more larger platforms, especially for the multi-mounts that we have. But in the style of the Rustic Lodge, and again, I end up mentioning the Hunter Classic, that lodge I think is the pinnacle of trophy lodges for me, other than the fact that in Classic it is quite small. I'd love to see basically like a cabin kind of trophy lodge. I think it could look so cool and just with room to house every trophy that we can end up getting. And I know as more species end up getting added, as more multi-mounts get added, eventually there's just going to be a need for more space. And over the course of the last two years, I feel like we've started to reach that point where more space is starting to be needed. So now we've officially reached the fun part. and. I've added three species to the end of my wish list for things that I want to see added to Call of the Wild that I think would be a lot of fun to hunt and also that could look good in the Trophy Lodge because for me the Trophy Lodge is one of the biggest things that has kept me playing this game for nearly 5,000 hours now. And number one to top the species part of this list is Marco Polo Sheep. Now there's a couple of reasons for that and I've intentionally not added any maps to this list because I feel like that gets too specific. But we really don't have much for hunting opportunities in Asia yet, and Marco Polo Sheep would have to be on an Asian map. I just think they're one of the coolest looking spe sheep species if you've never seen them. Uh, unfortunately, due to copyright reasons, I can't just put an image on screen, but they have an incredible curl, more so than what we see with the bighorn, which I still think may even be overdone in Call of the Wild, and they are huge. Like, I just, one of the coolest species I've ever seen, if you walk around like a Cabela's or anything like that, seeing them on the walls, if they could be out of the Call of the Wild, I would spend so much time looking for diamonds and potentially rares, assuming that can be a thing for them as well. They are an incredibly stunning species. Speaking of stunning, and again, I did not realize how many references I had back to the Hunter Classic in this wish list, Alpine Ibex are another really cool species, this time a goat species, and one that we can look at, at least for what they've done in Classic, and they're one of my favorites to hunt, just specifically because of how good the Trophy Class 1s look, and I mean, we've got the Ibex on Quadricline, that's actually on the map that we're running around for Red Deer right now, just none of them look nearly as good to me as Classic's Alpine Ibex. It really just comes down to looks, I think they are a lot of fun to hunt, I would like to see if they would do it, and I'd kind of like the same with Marco Polo Sheep if they ever got added. No drink zones, more like classic where you have to find them in the mountains, and ideally it should be really rare to find a big one. The challenge of hunting species like that in real life is really, I think, the draw to them, and in my opinion that should be replicated in game, but just to have the ability to hunt them in game, regardless of how it works, I would love it. And last but not least, with a kind of callback to a recent species added to Call of the Wild, crocodiles, I think it worked, honestly, on Veronica Savannah or on a new Africa map, but especially with the addition of the alligators on Mississippi, I would like to think the crocodiles shouldn't be too difficult to implement, and it turns out the alligators look amazing in the trophy lodge, the multi-mounts with the raccoons are really cool, and the challenge of hunting them, that kind of goes back to the goats and the sheep a little bit that I mentioned. The challenge of hunting them really does kind of keep me going in my drive to look for bigger ones and rares. There's not too many species in Call of the Wild that are so difficult to get. And I just think a little bit of balance every now and then, a species that's actually really challenging and a, a much higher percentage to lose if you don't make a perfect shot, it ends up being a lot of fun and 
ultimately that is essentially what it comes down to. The fact that it could go on a new Africa map, I think it could fit, I think it could work, and I mean, why not? Everybody wanted to see alligator for so long, I think they went over quite well. And crocodiles, I think they would end up being even bigger. So that could be pretty cool. Maybe a multi-mount with two of those fighting could be a thing to add on top of that. But that is my Call of the Wild wish list. And like I said, my goal wasn't just to, you know, simply state the things I want to see and, and that be it. I'm hoping that maybe some of you guys will agree with some of these things. Maybe they haven't been thought of as much. And maybe something will catch fire and end up all through EW streams. Who knows? And I'm also not saying go spam EW with these ideas. Uh, if there are ones that, you know, genu genuinely catch on, that's great. But I don't want to just spam things at them because that is not really the way to get things done either. But I thought it would be a fun way to put things together. Obviously, Christmas Eve, it just kind of works. I've done it before and I thought it was quite fun. And it's cool, I think, to kind of even refresh my own mind with these types of things. Whether it's in streams or in Discord, I get asked like what I want to see added, and sometimes I don't even know because I don't think about it that often. So to just get all those things kind of written down was pretty cool, and I don't know. A lot of them sound like they'd be really cool additions to me, so hopefully we get to see at least some of them sometime in the future. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.